Well, hello, friends. David Nuno here. Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. This is my trusty partner here, Nick Savage. Nick, we had a fun week on the program, did we not? We did. I'm a little worn out, but uh, yeah, as we got everybody there was to get, it seems like. Well, episode 3080, by the way, I don't usually say the episode, but episode 3080 on Tech Sags, the last day of SEC Media Days. It was our final day here in Nashville, so we, uh, we talked to Kurt Bowles. He and Olin are like, um, it's kind of like when I'm with Raheel. You know Raheel, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like we get like get, giddy little schoolgirls. That's how it is when Olin and Kirk are together. Roman Harper, that guy can dress. That guy can talk football. And that guy uh, corrected me, and I appreciate he did because it put, it put new light, new perspective. New perspective. He I didn't have it before. Yeah. And then if you guys could have seen what happened behind the scenes. Nick Savage, like, I'm going to get Paul Feinbaum. And he said it to me like it was, it was so my pop- project. And all week he was working on it, right? And, like, you know, he'd follow Paul around in the bathroom, oh. which was awkward. You did see him in the I, bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. It was, you know, uh, it, all right. The guy's in the urinal. And Nick's like, hey, don't look down. Anyway, we got Paul Feinbaum on the show. He was fantastic. Um, and I really appreciate his insight and how he was talking about Jimbo. So check out the Texas Rewind. By the way, if you want to know, I'm sure you do because that's why you're listening, who's talking today. Lane Kiffin will be talking a little bit. Uh, Ole Miss, uh, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Three teams that A&M will play this yeah. year. So you got Lane Kiffin. Everybody knows how much we love Lane Kiffin. Yep. Josh Heupel and Shane Beamer. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I like Heupel from what I've seen so far. I really like Shane Beamer. Lane Kiffin, I think he's good for college football, but I, I'm, I'm done with him. You know, the relationship ended a long time ago. Not that we ever had one. But uh, I I look at Ole Miss. In fact, I'm, we'll talk to Roman Harper here at around 835 or 830, I should say. I look at, at Ole Miss. They have a tough schedule. If I remember correctly, they go to the state of Alabama twice, and they go to Georgia. Those road trips, very difficult. Yeah. Um, I don't know how difficult the one at Auburn is going to be. The one in Tuscaloosa is going to be a lot more difficult. And Georgia, of course, that speaks for itself. Uh, you know, they, they deserve that after the, the pretty much cream puff start they you know, they had last year. They got them off to such a great, great beginning. OB, people keep asking me, what's the big stretch this year for the Aggies? Is it that Tennessee-Alabama stretch? Yeah, they're all big. Win the state of Mississippi, and I'll feel really good. I'll feel better. Yeah, are those games uh, close together? I, I've already kind of. I believe they are. I believe the they whole are. sketch. I know the first six games and seven games, and I think I think South Carolina's eighth game. So yeah, I guess they'd have to. Be. They're back to back at Old Miss at Old Miss on November fourth, Mississippi State at Kyle Field on and, November eleventh. And you know, I can remember. Uh, we all remember it was two thousand, I believe, sixteen when A and M was fourth in the first poll, the yep. first, and they they went to. Uh, Mississippi State, Mississippi State lost, yep. and then I think the next week they were home against Ole Miss and lost. It is a very important stretch for the Aggies. They're all important, but one of the things that I think has really <laughs> been a talking point about A and M this week, like the, like a, a legit talking point, not just getting mad about play calling, has been how the Aggies get up for the big game, and then they forget about some of the other games. The 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 work. The le- leading up to the, the, I don't want to call them minor games, but the game's not called Alabama LSU. Sometimes there isn't that same kind of attention to detail and focus out there on the field. Yeah, it seems that way. Do you sense that your the Longhorn population understands what they're going to be getting into next year? Maybe better even than the coaching staff. And here's a, oh, here's the reason I say that. that. Here's the reason I say that. Texas went in Arkansas a couple years ago. And just got blistered, you know. I don't know what was like forty to twenty. Yep. Sure didn't seem that close. And uh, you know, I've been watching college football in Longhorns for a few years, and I wrote all week about Texas. You better know what you're getting into because, you know, Arkansas left for the SEC in '92. Who's their biggest rival? I think it's still Texas. I know Wally Hall, a columnist uh, in Arkansas, he thinks it's still Texas. They hate Texas. And I was surprised when Sam Pittman said he didn't really want Texas as a permanent rival. I think if you polled Arkansas fans, it might be 90%, something like that. So 
I don't think Sark knew what he was getting into going to Fayetteville because the only time he'd ever been in Fayetteville was with Alabama right. and he wasn't bringing Alabama's team or roster with him. So I think he kind of had a kind of eye opening moment, you know, yeah, Fayetteville's a tough place to play, but you're going with Alabama, you're not scared of anybody. So I think that's kind of the difference, but, and you know, what's funny on that point, David, you can make an argument right now that Texas may be better prepared to go in the SEC than Oklahoma only because they're breaking in a new coach. Brent Venables is going to be in his second year, had a losing season, six and seven last year, and, and Texas just crushed them, 49 to nothing, and their recruiting has gone better, uh, and now they got the quarterback room is stacked, so you can almost make that argument that Texas is better prepared. I could agree with that. I just wonder how prepared both of them. Well, that's a good it's point. One thing when you go out and you lose to TCU, or who else they lose? I don't well, know. TCU was in the but championship I, yeah, we game. We saw how that went. Yeah, well, but they still got there. <laughs> but yeah, but but when they played the SEC team, you see how that how that went. Right. Well, but Texas played Alabama. I came within a play of winning. Now yeah, right. that's what so if. That, that, right. So the point, but the point is that that's what you get every week. Yes. Yeah. Well, you don't get Alabama every week, but no, you but get you excitement get... and intensity every week. I, I do agree with that. I'm not as worried about play calling. I'm worried about presentation. What does the offense look like? Yeah. If Bobby Petrino's installing the offense, I think we can call the plays, right? Like, no, no, it is an art to okay. calling a game. I've seen it. Sean Payton is an art to it. Mm -hmm. When you call the play, the way you set up the play, the when you motion to understand who you're trying to attack, making sure the stress points are right, understanding where the offense and the points of a field that you're trying to get to, and understanding that the players that are playing, how do you get the right depth on the the certain route to be able to open up the, the, one, the one that we really want, high versus low? So, no, it is an art to calling a game. I would never think that anybody can just call a game. That is so, so true. And that's a complete smack in the face of everybody that's really good at his offensive coordinator. I didn't mean it disrespectfully. I'm just saying. I, oh, yeah, I'm not. I've never yeah. called a game, so it's not disrespecting me. I'm yeah. just like, it is a pure art, though. I, I guess I'm just trying to stress that I think the offense needed to be upgraded the way they go into it and getting guys the, the ball in space. And I think that's why Bobby Petrino there. That was more my point. Yeah, he's an accomplished defensive back. What, how much, how much trouble, how much confusion does all that pre snap motion cause? Um, it, it makes you have to think, it makes you have to adjust. And so, you know, that was another big thing because Jordan Rogers would sit on our set all the time and say, you know, Jimbo's offense, they don't motion enough. They don't do this. They don't, they don't do certain things. They come in the same two by two formation. Um, and then all of a sudden they play teams like Alabama and you got, motion all over the place they're doing all these other things it's such a great game plan but they don't do that on a week-to-week -week basis um I, I think it does do something when you play against teams that have to communicate and we don't play a lot of zone so now when motion happens it's a lot of rotation it's a lot of other things that have to happen it just makes you have to prepare in different ways and it also allows the offense to be able to read the book and it tells you a story when guys motion with him and somebody goes with him. Okay. Maybe he's man. All right. If nobody goes and somebody bumps. Okay. Maybe it's zone. Then I kind of bring him back. And it's just, it's just a way to be able to check some balance and, you know, see some things out there. And if I can get a free look, you know, it's almost like when I'm playing poker, if we're just going to, you know, tap and keep it moving, I'll, I'll take a free look. Why not? Right. So that is what it's really all about. A lot of the motion and some of the other things, but you still got to be able to build offenses out and understand where you're trying to attack. And I can hit you guys with a whole bunch of football jargon. Uh, my man T-Bob says I'm like the Matrix because the way I see the game. But um, my man Neo, but it's, 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 it's the way you have to try and present it and also where you're trying to attack defense is at. So does every fan base think you're against them? Uh, no, just the prominent ones. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that, that happens. And, yeah. and I... You give opinions. Uh, most of the problems I have come from from just idle comments that are out of context, and you, you have to live with it. I mean, I, I, I've, I'm, I've almost been in a position this week of saying I've been misquoted, even though I said it. I was on a, a national show about Nick Saban, and you get an awkward question, you give an answer, somebody tweets it, it's gone. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, we're talking to Feinbaum, uh, Paul Feinbaum here on Tech Sags Radio. Paul, let's talk about Jimbo on Monday. What he said at the podium, then on your show, what did you? What was your big takeaway of everything? So, I'm in a weird position. Uh, I was doing other interviews while he was at the podium. I had no idea what he said. 
Um, I just assumed that everyone knew that Bob Petrino was calling the plays. And I, and I just said something to him about that. And he said, yeah, and he, I think he said, you know, sometimes with Jimbo, it's a little bit hard to interpret. But uh, Lucci told me later that he did say that, that Bobby Petrino was going to call the plays, which, which was bizarre since nobody else heard him say that. I just think he was loose. Uh, we were, it was a, it was an unconventional interview. A lot of people were uh, texting me saying, man, it was like really weird. But I, I just, when I, when I, we had 20 minutes, just kind of, you can't just, I did, he'd already been on at the podium. Why am I going to ask him about the quarterback situation? Why am I going to ask him about uh, last year? So we just kind of got off onto some topics and I think he, he said a lot. I, I like, I really like talking to Jimbo Fisher because he, he, he's authentic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do people dislike him? Of course. Uh, is everybody in Alabama still mad at him? You better believe it. But I, I, I found that, that statement that he made last year, I, I was like mesmerized by that. This, I mean, I, I've never seen a coach be real and that's what he is. He's a real guy. Tell him what to do. Like, subscribe, comment. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't like your energy there. I want you to really feel the like. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we're growing on YouTube, so keep it up. Follow us on Texags Radio Twitter, Texags Twitter, all kinds of good content. Instagram, uh, follow David. I don't want you to follow me on Instagram or anything, anything personal. But Why? Just because. You, you don't want people to see you? Not really, no. Why? Only the people that know me. So, but you're a personality now. Everybody knows. Well, you. I mean, no, I'm not really. The Bombers community needs to know. Anyways, the Texax community needs to know. Sure. I want the guys that, never mind. I won't say who I want them to fall. Never mind. You know who you're talking about. Thanks so much for watching this week. We'll see you next time. We're coming home.